Never Stop Learning, week 244. We're going to take a quick look at the background eraser tool in Adobe Photoshop CC 2015. All right, so the way this tool works is it's going to eliminate the background while protecting your foreground. And the cool thing is, is it's going to try to eliminate the background colors that creep into the foreground edge. That way you don't get this weird haloing when you bring in a new background image. Now the way you activate this tool is you hit Shift E a couple times until you see the eraser with the scissors icon. All right, so that's going to change the cursor. Notice I have this really small brush here. You could use the brackets to increase or decrease the size of your brush. So I'm going to use the right brackets to increase the size of my brush and then the left bracket to decrease the size of my brush. Now what you're looking at here is the brush area and you see the crosshairs. The crosshair is kind of like your hotspot. It's actually going to identify what background pixels look like because Photoshop can't tell the difference between foregrounds and backgrounds. All right, so if I click once, I just told Photoshop that the pixels that were under my crosshair are background pixels. So eliminate all of those pixels that look like that within a 50% tolerance and are inside of this brush. Notice that that green portion of my image went unaffected. All right, so I'm going to undo that by hitting Command Z on my keyboard. Now over here at the top, we have these different controls. Starting at the left, we have our little preset manager here. We have one here by default, but let's say you make some changes to this tool and get it exactly how you want it. Then you can come over here, click on this icon, and save that as a new tool preset, and you could use it again and again. All right, you could fine tune your brush by clicking on this drop down and changing the size, hardness, spacing, etc. I'm going to tuck this guy away and then show you sampling. So by default, we're going to be sampling continuous. So let's see what that means. Over here on my brush, you see the crosshair? That's where we're going to sample. I'm going to click and drag. As I drag towards new pixels, we're sampling again and again and again. All right, if I bring this crosshair into this green area, now we're sampling green and it's starting to remove green portions of my image. Notice it's protecting the blue. If I bring the crosshair into the blue area, now it's starting to remove the blue. So we're continuously telling Photoshop where the new background pixels are. I'm going to undo that. The next one we have over here is sample once. All right, so when I click on that, I'm going to come back into my image, click once in the blue area and drag. All right, I'm eliminating more of these blue pixels. But then if I bring this crosshair into the green, notice nothing happens. I'll bring the crosshair back into the blue and it's starting to eliminate the blue portions of my image. All right, so that's because Photoshop is just remembering that first click and that first click was done in the blue area. All right, I'm going to undo that. The third sampling version is going to be sampling background swatch. Click on it to activate it. And now that I have it activated, it's going to be using the background swatch. So if you look over my tools panel on the left, all the way at the bottom, you'll see that I have white. So if I click and drag on my image, I'm going to eliminate a portion of my subject. All right, so I'm going to undo that. Let's set a new background color. All right, I want my background color to be one of these blues in here. So I'm going to hold down the Alt or Option key on my keyboard, and that's going to temporarily give me this eyedropper tool. I'm going to click once and then release the Alt or Option key, and that's going to bring back the background eraser tool. Notice over in the Tools panel, I have blue as a foreground color. So if I hit Shift X, it's going to swap those two, and now I have a white foreground with a blue background. All right, so I'm going to click and drag, and now we're eliminating those blue pixels. All right, so I'm going to undo that. Next, we have Limits. By default, it's set to Contiguous. So let's see what that means. All right, so I'll bring my cursor back into the document. Notice it's hovering over some blue and over some green. We're still using the information uh, in our background swatch. I'm going to click once. Now that hotspot, it eliminated all of the blue pixels that were touching those pixels. Notice we have some blue pixels that are under our art brush, but those have not been eliminated. And that's because they're being separated by these green pixels here. So let's undo that. I'll come back over here to the top. I'm going to switch over to discontiguous, and that'll kind of show us the difference between the two. 
All right, I'm going to kind of go in the same spot that I was at earlier. Click again. This time it's getting rid of all of the blue pixels that were inside of that brush area. Still, it's protecting our foreground image. I'm going to undo that. We also have find edges. And when you're working with find edges, I'm going to click right here once. What it's trying to do is uh, match the sharpness that it's finding in the edge there. All right, so I'm going to undo that and bring this guy up to discontiguous. Now let's take a look at tolerance. Currently we have a tolerance of 50%, but I'm going to back off on that. This determines the color range that we're going to be working with. So again, we're using the background color swatch within a tolerance of 21%. This time when I click and drag, I'm eliminating less pixels than I was previously. I'm going to undo that, increase the tolerance, click and drag, this time I'm eliminating more because I have a larger color range when I have a larger tolerance. I'll increase the tolerance to 100%. This time I'm working with such a high tolerance or high color range that I'm gonna be removing portions of my uh, subject and grass and foreground. I'm gonna undo that and set the tolerance back to 50%. <clears throat> All right, so now that I have it set to 50%, I wanna take a look at this next feature, which is do not erase the foreground swatch color. Click on it to activate it. All right, so let's set our foreground color to this green we have here. I'm gonna hold down Alter Option, click on it once. Now we have a foreground and background targeted. I'm gonna click and drag, and we're telling Photoshop what our foreground should be and what our background should be. It's protecting that foreground and getting rid of all that blue for the background. I'm gonna undo that. This last feature that you see over here, this is gonna be for people that are using pressure controlled tablets. When I click on it, it's turned on, and it's gonna be using the pressure information to determine the size of my brush. Because I'm using a mouse, I'm gonna turn it off, and when you have that feature turned off, or let's say you're not using a pressure controlled tablet, it's gonna use the information that you have right in here to determine the size of your brush. All right, so I'm gonna switch this over to sample once, leave it set to discontinuous, click and drag. So that's just one click. And I'm going across my entire image just like this pretty quick. I'm not trying to be accurate at all, but I'm able to eliminate that background really quickly. Now, some people are going to tell you that it's better to use masks, and I definitely agree. I would use a mask for my final product. But if you notice, I'm actually working with low-res files. At this point, I'm determining whether or not I want to purchase these as a high-res version. So I don't mind using the background eraser tool to quickly remove the background and see if it's gonna work for me. So let's finish this off. I'm gonna switch over to this other document. I got another low res file here. I'll go into layer, duplicate layer, change the destination, and then click okay. When I go back into the document that we were already working on, I see this new sky, but I don't see the stuff we had earlier. That's because this is above what we were working on. I'm gonna hit Command left bracket to send it to the bottom of the stack. And now we have this new background here and it looks like it works really well. So now at this point, I could decide, yes, I do wanna purchase the high res version of this so I can continue on with this project. And there you have it folks, that's a quick look at the background eraser tool in Adobe Photoshop CC 2015.